Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial on how we made Wei Wuxin sword Su Pian or the English translation whatever. This is a tutorial a lot of you have been waiting for for over a year now. It's finally here and as you can see it's a pretty damn long tutorial so get comfortable because we're gonna spend a long time together. With that said, let's get started. The wood we are using for the sword is old Danish oak wood. It's very strong, doable and easy to work with. Start off by drawing the shape of the sword on the wood. Use a band saw to cut the sword out. When you use a band saw, you just have to follow the line. The band saw itself will pressure the wood down to the board. Otherwise, it's very easy to use but very dangerous, so please be careful. Cut off 5mm on each side of the grip. The grip will have a width of 3cm. Use a cinder scribe to mark the center of the sword. This is going to be your guarding line for when we are going to plane the blade. We are going to go the old fashioned way by using a hand plane. Place the sword on the edge of a table, secure it with some clamps and then start planing. Plane the wood obliquely from the guarding line and do it on both sides until you have a rumble shape. The point of the sword can be a little bit tricky to do. We used a stick to prevent the sword from moving while the other end was still secured with clamps. When we have the rod shape of the sword, we're going to move to a sander with a 120 grit belt. Hold the sword obliquely and be careful not to add too much pressure nor too little. This step is very difficult if you're not used to work with a machine like this. Therefore, I would recommend to test try on another piece of wood before you do it with the actual product. And as you can see, it can be sanded down very thin. And since this is all about pressure, there might be some places where it's thicker than others. But you can always just go back to the machine to fix it. We're gonna move the blade to the side and start working on the cross guard. I'm gonna make a shout out to Michikots for sharing their pattern of the cross guard, which I'm very grateful for. You can find a link to Michikots Instagram in the description box. The wood we use for the cross guard is from a birch tree. The reason for that is because the birch tree has less grains. For the cutting part, we use our decoupage saw. Why we use that instead of the band saw is because the blade is much thinner and perfect to cut out pieces with lots of curves. We are going to make one more piece and after it's cut out we are going to temporarily glue the two pieces together with some CA glue. Put two pieces of paper between them so it's easier to separate them. We're gonna make the two pieces identical with help from a circular sander with an AT grid belt. Lay the cross guard on the sword and trace the outline of the cross guard. You're also gonna mark the width of the sword on the cross guard, cause we're gonna cut some of it off so the cross guard can be laid on top of the sword so the two pieces will be connected on each side. Separate the two pieces and remove the papers. Remove the middle part with a circular saw. When you're done, put it on the sword to see if it fits. If it does, you do the same thing with the other piece. When you're done with the two pieces, put them together on the sword to see if they connect. If they do, you're done with the base of the cross guard.
Now we're gonna make two more pieces, which is gonna be the ones with all the details. Find your pattern and then lay some tracer paper underneath and start drawing the details. Mark the places that's gonna get cut out and then find your drill. Drill holes so the decoupage saw can get through. And then you just cut all the pieces out. Use a sandpaper 240 to remove all the chips from the base pieces to give it a smooth surface for when we are going to glue the detail pieces on. Add wood glue on the lines and then go grab a brush to smooth everything out. Then you just glue the two pieces together. When you have done that, we're gonna leave it to dry. Grab some clamps and wood. The wood is gonna help adding distributed pressure. While they dry, we're gonna work on making the grip hand friendly. This part you have to experiment with yourself because we all have different hand sizes. The only tip I can give you is that the grip shall feel comfortable in your hand. We cut out two pieces of old Danish oak wood, one for each side. After that, we have to wait for the cross guard to dry so we can mark the cross guard shape onto the grip. You have to do it with each piece and remember to mark them with a symbol so you can see which pieces belong together. After we glue the details on to the base cross guard, the two pieces are not identical. So we are going back to rough sand the two pieces so they are identical with an AT grid belt. Sand the grip so it will fit to the cross guard. Then check if it fits. We're temporarily gluing the two crossguard pieces together. Use CA glue and two pieces of paper. Leave it to dry for a couple of minutes. Then the final rough sanding of the crossguard to make all four pieces identical so they are ready for when we put everything together. Separate the two pieces and remove the papers. Then find some 240 sandpaper and start removing the stains from the CA glue. We're gonna dry fit the cross guard and grip before we glue anything together. When everything looks fine, grab some wood glue and apply it to the grip. Use a brush to smooth it out. Leave the cross guard on with clamps. We will wait with gluing that on until the end. When you have applied both pieces, secure it with lots of clamps. Then you can remove the cross guard and start sanding the surface with a broad sander with a cone of 100. This sander is gonna make the cross guard super soft and also soften the edges so they aren't so sharp. Here you can see the difference. Here we are redrawing the top line so it can be a guard line for when we are going to engrave it. For the engraving we are going to use a dremel with a diamond bit. And this is how it turned out. Use a sizzle to clean the saw lines. Then we're done with the cross guard for now. We are going back to work on the grip.
We're gonna rough plan the grip into an oval shape and after we're gonna use the drum sander with a 120 grit belt. More sanding with a corn 240. The source pommel is cut out of angle. Make a guard line and use a band saw to cut it off. Sand the pommel with a corn 240. First we're gonna sand all over the grip with a 120 grit. After that we're gonna finish every piece with a 240 grit. After that we're gonna move the saw to the side and start making the scabbard. We're gonna use old Danish oak for the scabbard as well. First we're gonna plane the wood through the thickness planer down to 7mm. Place the sword in the middle and sketch it out. You're also going to cut two pieces with a width of 10mm, which is going to be the size of the scabbard. When you have the pieces, put them together to test if the sword can move inside the scabbard. Trace the outline of the cross guard. Then cut it out. Then do the same thing on the other piece. Remember not to use the same cross guard piece. Use both of them and mark on the scabbard which side belongs to which cross guard. Fine tuning with a file. Place the sword on one of the scabbard pieces and put the two side pieces on the sides of the blade and outline it. Then cut the scabbard out, but only one of them. Take the other scabbard piece and grab some wood glue, then glue the sides on, secured with lots of clamps. While we wait for the glue to dry, let's get the sword and trade the characters for Su Bien on the blade. Get your Dremel and start engraving the characters. If you're not familiar with how a Dremel works, try test the Dremel on another piece of wood. Now back to the scabbard. We used the handsaw to cut the miter and then we glued the tip on. Once it dried, we tested to see how much space there was inside the scabbard, to see if we could put some felt fabric inside to prevent the blade from getting scratched. We concluded that there was enough space, but we did not have enough felt fabric to cover the entire inside, so we ended up to only cover at the entrance. We used wood glue to glue the felt fabric on. Make sure when you put the felt fabric on that you smooth it thoroughly. Here we're just trying to make it fit and to cut off all the extras. But I can see in the end we decided to cut all the extras off. And my guess is because the sword could move smoothly in and out of the scabbard. 
which means that one of the sides will have scratches on it and that is super sad. But it's also just a lesson to next time when I'm gonna make a new sword. Note to self, remember to calculate enough space for felt fabric. Now we're gonna cut the tip of the scabbard out. Then we're going to glue the scabbard together, add wood glue down the sides and put the top on, secure it with lots of clamps. While we wait for the scabbard to dry, we're going to glue the cross guard on, add wood glue on both pieces and smooth it out with a brush. Put it on the blade and remember to put them on on the correct side of the blade. Find two wood pieces to add distributed pressure and secure it with clamps. Now we just have to wait for both pieces to dry. Now when it's dried, let's cut the remaining wood off. Sand the edge with an 80 grit drum sander. Now we're gonna round the edges with a round over bit with a radius 15 millimeters. Sand the scabbard using a 120 grit belt. Then go over with a rotating sander with a 120 grit sander. And if you will take a look at the background, we are also doing it on the blade. We noticed that on one of the sides at the bottom of the cross guard, we had sanded a little bit too much away. That can happen, but fear not, we can fix it. First we use a corn 80 grit on a half round piece of wood to smooth out the surface. Then take some filler and mix it together with some wood glue and the final ingredient is some sawdust. Mix it well and then you basically have created some fake wood. Use a spatula to apply on the areas there is needed. You can also use it to fill out holes. It's quite common for wood to have some holes here and there, so make sure you find all of them and fill them out. If you read one of the boxes earlier, or you might have already pointed it out, the tip of the sword is wrong. I noticed that later and honestly I thought that we had to start all over, but apparently no, you don't have to. You're gonna cut out two pieces of wood that fits the tip so it will create a square. Use a hand plane if it's necessary. When the two pieces fit, we're gonna glue them on with some epoxy glue. Use a spatula to mix it well before applying. Epoxy glue is really strong, so make sure you put something underneath the wood. We use a clear plastic bag. Apply the epoxy glue on the two pieces and while they dry it's super important that they stay where you put them. So please make sure you use some wood and lots of clamps to secure them so they don't move around while the glue dries. When the glue was dry, we made a rough sketch of the shape and then cut only the tip out. Then we took a ruler and folded the line of the scabbard.
then cut it out. Then use a belt sander with a 120 grit. Sand the tip, the sides and the surface. We could then see we had enough room to cut more off, but also to make the sides more even, but mostly because the original salt's tip did not have that long sides as ours. As you can see, it is just drawn with the eyes. If you really want the two sides to be identical, then use a ruler. And when that is done, cut it out. Then you just go back to the belt sander and go over it once again. And this is how it looks. As you can see, there is a hole at the tip and where the two pieces are glued on. We are gonna do the same thing we did with the cross guard, but instead we are gonna use epoxy glue and some sawdust. Use the spatula to apply the glue and we are going to do one side at a time. Once it's dry, use the belt sander to remove the remaining glue and then apply glue to the other side. Then go over with a rotating sander with a 120 grit to remove the remaining glue from when we filled the holes out. Then we're gonna make the tip have round edges like the rest of the scabbard. We use the same bit as before, radius 15. Then finish it off with a rotating sander with a 120 grit. Now we go back to work on the cross guard. First we use our wood rasps to recreate the shape and after we go over with a round stick with our corn AT grid. And to finish it off we use sandpaper with a corn 240 grid. And this is how it turned out. It is quite hard to see where the glue is, but I hope you can still spot it. So because we earlier in the video used the rotating sander to go over the blade, the engraving disappeared, which I'm quite happy with because the first one turned out really ugly. We are done building the sword, now we just need to paint it, add the details and make the tassel. We're gonna paint the whole sword with black acrylic paint. After the first layer is dry, you will have to go over everything with a sandpaper 220 grit. Why you may ask? Well after the first layer, all the grains in the wood will start raising. Therefore we use some fine sandpaper to remove them before adding the second layer. Make sure you sand everything very well. Before adding the second layer, you can go over with a compressor to remove all the dust and loose grains. Once the paint is dry, cover the grip and cross guard with tape and then we will start painting the blade. For the blade I'm using a silver spray bottle and a black spray bottle. First I paint the blade in silver and after I go over lightly with the black spray bottle. This is gonna leave a very nice metallic look. 
Now we paint the cross guard. I first tried painting it by hand, but it left so many brush strokes. Though it did have a nice metallic look that I really loved at the end, but all the brush strokes were still there. So I ended up with using a gold spray bottle instead. When that is done, we are done painting the sword. While we wait for it to dry, let's start make the tassel. I couldn't find the exact same pearls as Wei Wuxin's, so I designed my own version of the tassel and I love how it turned out. I used some red yarn, a clear elastic string, blue pearls and those gold pearls with rhinestones on the sides. I don't know if they have a specific name, so I'm just gonna call them gold pearls. And then the Yungmong clarity bill as a reference. The total length is gonna be 42.5 cm and I'm gonna use the Yungmong clarity bill to measure the length on the different pieces. The skirt is gonna have a length of 20 cm. Take your red yard and start measure the length. Give it one extra centimeter for when we tie it together and then you fold it until you are satisfied. Once you're satisfied, cut the yard string off at one of the ends and then you just cut an extra string around 7 to 10 centimeters long so we can create a neck. I just tied two knots and started twisting the string around the skirt to create the neck. And once there wasn't any string left, I secured with knots. Once that was done, I went to the other end and started cutting the loops. Glide your fingers through the skirt to see if you have missed any loops. Once that is done, cut the end even. And then you are done with the skirt, for now. We're gonna make the pearls now. I don't know if this part of the tassel has a specific name, I couldn't find anything on the internet, but if you know the name then please leave a comment so I will know for another time. The same goes for this thing, I have been asking around and no one knows what it's called. I use some clear elastic thread, but I would recommend you use some still wear instead. We're gonna pick up the skirt again and cut the top off just above the neck. Then prepare the glue gun and then we're gonna glue the skirt into that thing. Please be careful not to burn yourself. If there is anything sticking out, just cut it off.
We're gonna make the braided cord. I cut three strings around 42 cm long, then used a clamp to hold the strings while braiding. Once I can't braid any longer, I connect the two ends and tie a knot. Once it's time to connect everything, I just want to warn you that the way I did it is really not that great. It can be done a lot better. So after you have watched the way I did it and you're like, oh gosh, feel free to go find a video with someone who knows what they're doing. I completely understand. So the thing I just showed you is in Danish called and staff slash I, or that's what the package says. I couldn't find a translation, so if you know what they're called, please leave a comment. What I have done so far is to put the elastic through the eye at the top where the braided cord is gonna be. And after I put the elastic back through the pearl so it can be tied at the hook of the neck where the skirt is. Once that is done, I cut the elastic with a good amount of length so I can secure it at the neck with lots of knots. After a good amount of knots, I slightly burn the knots to melt them together. Then for the final part, I cut and burn the knot of the braided cord and then I stick the staff slash eye through the knot of the braided cord. I wanted to make a loop by taking the staff through the little loop it has, but I couldn't make it work so I ended up with this instead. This is how it turned out. Now we can work on the details. I started with the base. I used some 1.5mm thick foam and traces all the pieces out that I had drawn by hand. And then I used a knife to cut the pieces out. I would recommend you use some needles to pin your patterns down. Sadly, I must inform you that you have to figure out the pieces by yourself. Once I have cut everything out, I took some random leftover piece and went outside to test if you could use a gold spray bottle to paint the pieces. And yes, you can. And it doesn't even crack and it still keeps its flexibility. And if the spray bottle spitted out some huge clumps of paint, I just used the other side instead. While the base piece is dry, we are gonna cut the second layer out to the pieces that need second layers. Just take your time with this and be careful not to cut yourself. Once you have cut them out, you can go outside to paint them. Once the base pieces are dry, it's time to glue them on the scabbard. I used a glue gun to glue the pieces on. The detail around the entrance of the scabbard is crossed, but instead of laying the pieces about each other, we did some copy cutting instead, so the two pieces will fit nicely together. Once that is done, you just glue the two pieces together.
do the same thing for this piece. Glue the base piece on and while you're at it, glue the detailed one on as well. My guess here is that I forgot to glue this piece on. So this is just a video of me trying to make it fit. After this you would not see how I made the rest of the details because I had an early footage shoot the day after as Wei Ying and the sword. Uh, not because I was the sword but um, with the sword. And because recording everything takes a lot of time I decided to turn it off. Even after I did not manage to glue on all the pieces. But I think you have gotten the basic information on how I made the pieces and how I glued them on. After the pieces are glued on, we are gonna drill a hole for the tassel so it can be attached. I used the glue gun and added glue on the tassel and a needle to stick it inside the hole. The last step is making the final Zupian engraving on the scabbard. I use the marker to write out the characters as a guideline for when I'm using the Dremel. Then we're just gonna paint it with some black paint. And then we are done with the sword! So it has been almost two years since we started making the sword and I'm thinking about remaking the details but this time in foam clay instead. But I have never worked with it before so if any of you know if it's possible to make the details out of foam clay instead and if it works on wood, please leave a comment. And if it's possible, will you be interested in watching a tutorial on how it's done? Either way, thank you so much for watching this long tutorial. I hope it was useful or at least inspiring for some other project. And as always, if there is some part you didn't quite understood or where you have no clue on what to do, then don't be shy and leave a comment. I will try to explain it as best as I can. If you liked the video, please give it a thumb up and if you want to see some of my other videos, feel free to visit my channel and if you like my content, don't feel shy to hit the subscribe button. If you want to see my cosplay pictures, links to my other social media accounts are in the description box. Thank you so much for watching, see you next time.